to another installment of Apostle GMS giving all praises to Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai. Today's topic is going to be entitled, well this is going to be an ongoing thing on the Gentiles versus the Gentiles. And um, the subtopic is going to be Cornelius and the Israelite foreigners. So go ahead. Uh, this, is, um, this is from the Zondervan Compact Bible Dictionary. Just wanted to start off with this because it, it, it mentions the name Cornelius, but it doesn't really say too much. So I just wanted to start off with this one here. It says uh, Cornelius of a horn, which that's not what the word Cornelius means. Right? The word Cornelius li literally means uh, seed. Etymology of the name Cornelius. The name Cornelius comes from the Latin word cornu, meaning horn. Hence, such useful English words as cornet, cornel, corneus, or corni, nigarius, cornigarius, uh, to cornigarius, yeah, but not corn. Curiously enough, which derives from an old German word, kernum, meaning small seed, hence also um, our word grain. You know? Um, it says Roman centurion stationed at Caesarea and the first Gentile convert, Acts 10 and 11. And that's all they give you on that. Now, I'm going to read this other one um, in the uh, other definition in Harper's Bible Dictionary. And uh, this one goes into it a little bit more. And, um, and the reason why Cornelius was called Cornelius, it was an omen nomen. But you got uh, uh, clowns out there using uh, uh, terminology and, 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 and sayings that we say, but they talk shit about us. Uh, but anyway, the word Cornelius literally means of a kernel, like a kernel, which, which goes back into the word seed. And the reason why his name was called that through the Spirit was because he was going to be the first Israelite foreigner that was going to come back through and his, the mercy was going to be extended unto him to bring uh, back the Israelite foreigners. Because when Yahweh Shai came, he came first to the Jews, to the uh, uh, southern kingdom, and those that, were, that knew that they were Israelites. You know, and then Cornelius was the beginning of pulling in those Israelites that, were, uh, uh, that had gone astray, so to speak. So that was a seed that was planted through that man, Cornelius, to bring the Israelite foreigners back. But this is in um, the Harper's Bible Dictionary. It says, Cornelius, a Roman centurion stationed in Caesarea, the story of his conversion to Christianity is told at length in Acts 10, and he is defended by Peter in Acts 11. A further allusion to him is made in Acts 15, 5-7. The repetition of his glory indicates his significance for Acts as a model Gentile convert. And, and really, what they're painting, painting it at here is as, as him being an Edomite or of another nation. And that's not the case. Because when you, you, when you use the word Gentile, you have to uh, qualify the term uh, Gentile. That's why the name of this series, series is called the Gentiles versus the Gentiles. Why? Because there is a distinction, a difference, you know, which, which back in the days during the time of uh, Yahweh Shai and the disciples and them, they understood what the, the, the difference between the two wor was. Um, I'm glad you said that because um, there's a scripture that backs you up, uh, John 7 and 35. It says, Then said the Jews among themselves, Whither will he go that we shall not find him? Will he go unto the dispersed among the Gentiles and teach the Gentiles? And that's, that's what Cornelius was. He was an example of one of the dispersed among the Gentiles. And he was taught by who? The apostle uh, uh, Peter. Yep. And, and when, when he was dispersed among the Gentiles, he ended up uh, doing the, the office of, of a centurion. So he, he, he worked up his way in the ranks of the uh, Roman um, uh, army to, to the uh, um, position of a centurion, which was a prestigious pos position at the time. 
Because I believe a centurion means 100, which means he was over uh, uh, the authority of 100 men, you know, which they would have, you know, squadrons and all, and they all consisted of a certain number of men, you know, but he was, he was in charge of 100 men, you know. Uh, so it goes on to say, before his conversion, Cornelius was apparently associated with the synagogue as a God-fearer. He gave alms and dedicated himself to prayer while he and his friends listened to Peter uh, present the gospel. The Holy Spirit came upon them. For the right of Acts, this was divine attestation that Gentiles or Israelite foreigners should be accepted into the Christian community on the same basis and example faith as Jewish converts to believe to belief in Yahweh Shai as the Messiah. They have Jesus here. You know, we know his name is Yahweh Shai. It is significant that in Acts, it is Peter who opens a door of faith to the Gentiles, which is the Israelite foreigners, but he does so only after having received a vision from the Most High. See also Caesarea, Gentile, Peter. I got a scripture for you, uh, the book of Isaiah 65 and 1. And uh, what happened with Cornelius was uh, an example of the fulfillment of this scripture, Isaiah 65 and 1. Now, in the Red Bible... When you look at the Red Bible on the subheading, it says the calling of the Gentiles, all right, which is the Israelite foreigners. It says, I am sought of them that ask not for me. I am found of them that sought me not. I said, behold me, behold me unto a nation that was not called by my name. Oh, oh, oh. And then, you know, they'll say, well, see, that's talking about the other nations because you said the people that was not called by my name. You know, which showed you that, that they have no understanding of the scriptures. When you read the scriptures, man, it, it's, it's plain. It's, it's simple. It's not, it's not hard to uh, uh, understand, you know, if, if you're a, a member of the elect. All right? This is the book of uh, Hosea, chapter 1. And uh, um, matter of fact, I'm going to start at 8. Now, this is a story of Hosea, you know, the prophet. And the Most High told him to take a, a wife out of hoardings because Israel was going off back then. Because the Most High was about to cast Israel out of his sight. You know, for a certain time until he sent until the fullness of the time came when he sent his son, Yahweh Shai, made of a woman made under the law to redeem them that were under the law. You know, there was a certain uh, time period for that. So this is Hosea 1 and 8. Now, when she had weaned the Ruhamah, she conceived and bare a son. Then said the Most High, call his name Lo Ami, for ye are not my people and I will not be your power. Now, Lo Ami is La I'm Yah, not my people. So now. The Most High said, you are not my people. Why? Because he had cast us off to the side. But does that mean that Israel was not the people of the Most High? No. The, um, the Most High was angry, so he turned his face away from us. Lo, Lo Ami was an Israelite. Yep. Because his father, Hosea, was an Israelite. Right. That's right. And that was a nomen omen, once again, you know, for, for future prophecy that was going to take place. And really, if you get technical, all of us here, when, when we were born in America, we were born into a Gentile state of mind. You know, and this is the place, because, you know, we were always taught that we were niggas, spicks, spooks, wetbacks, you know, w or whatever name you want to call us. Anything but an Israelite. And here is, is the place where it was told us that we are the, 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 the uh, sons of the living power. Even when they're calling us black Hebrew Israelites. Yep, yep. That's still disrespect. That's right. You know, we're just Hebrew Israelites. That's it. But they have to, see, this devil has to do that because they have to put labels on everything. You know, they can't let the world know that we are Israelites. They have to say, well, these are the black Hebrew Israelites, and they claim this and that and the other. They can't just come straight out with the truth because they're not about the truth. So they have to put labels on stuff. Because, see, with Esau, he has to categorize everything. You know, he, everything has to have a category. But which shows you that he's a carnal man. Now, the, the scriptures are, are spiritual. They're like the wind. You don't know where, it, where it's going. You don't know where it's coming from. You know, so you can't categorize everything. That's why they have a problem trying to uh, establish what we teach because it, 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 it goes everywhere. It, you know, it's, this, it's not just one set curriculum. The Spirit deals with all different types of, of, uh, of, uh, of prophecies and, and, and uh, um, uh, um, uh, uh, teachings, you know, uh, for lack of better words. You know, so the Lord ain't gonna, is not going to allow these heathens to get there because they have a carnal mind and not a spiritual mind. You know, and, and like how I said, my sheep hear my voice and they follow me. And it said that they followed the lamb with us wherever he went. 
You know, so that's how this truth is. There's no one way. There's no one uh, category of it. You know, uh, for for lack of better, uh, for lack of word, you know, better words. You know, so that's why they can't they can't bottle it up. That's why there's so many splits. There's so many things going on because the Lord uh, set it up that way for controversy, or should I say, controversy? <laughs> Inside joke. All right. So it says, "Yet the number of the children of Israel shall be as the sand of the sea." which cannot be measured nor numbered. And it shall come to pass that in the place where it was said unto them, you are not my people, you know, there it shall be said unto them, ye are the sons of the living power. So when it says there in, in, in uh, um, Isaiah, the 65th chapter, that, you know, that I was sort of them, that, that uh, how, how, how was that? Yeah, let me read it for you again. Uh, Isaiah 65 and 1. I am sort of them that ask not for me, I am found of them that sought me not. I said, behold me, behold me unto a nation not called by my name. Right. So now, at this particular time in the fight, you know, this is where the Lord is, 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 is bringing back the Israelites to their, to their nationality. Read that verse again, Ock. Um, Isaiah 65 and yeah. 1. Isaiah 65 and 1. I am sought of them that ask not for me. I am found of them that sought me not. I said, Behold me, behold me unto a nation that was not called by my name. Behold me, behold me unto a nation that was not called by my name, meaning the, the Israelite foreigners. Because at one time they knew the Most High, then they um, lost the name, lost the fact of who they are. So that's why you have this big controversy with this uh, Gentile things. And that's, and that's why you have different groups like I mentioned, GOCC, they're talking about the Gentiles are going to come in. And the scriptures, that most of the scriptures that they go into, they don't understand the scriptures on the Gentiles. That's why they teach that Cornelius is an Edomite. So does HODC. Because they don't understand how to put these scriptures together. And it's, being, it's, be, it's becoming more evident. You can say that GMS is the worst camp out there. Yeah. You can go ahead and say that, all right? Well, we that. But you watch all the uh, videos. You know, um, you're going it's going it's being made evidence more and more who the true men of the most high are. God, this is a I, no, I was going to back up Apostle Tor. Uh, he said uh, they say we're the worst camp. Well, we love that. You know, it's a moniker that we wear proudly. <laughs> we're so bad. Don't watch us no more. Yeah, yeah. Cut, you cut. know, if it's hey, if you got a better like a sit up trailer, a sitcom. And you get, place. what is it, 13 uh -huh. episodes? <laughs> you know, they might cut it in seven episodes because it's a bad, you know, bad uh, series, man. Meaning bad, not good bad, but bad bad, you know? And so we, 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 the, we the ones that's so bad, why y'all watch us? Why are you always bringing our name up? Romans 1 and 21, this goes up to back up what Apostle said uh, of, uh, in Isaiah, the 65th chapter. This is uh, Romans 1 and 21. Because that, when they knew the Most High, they glorified him not as the Most High. And you you got to establish who, who, who uh, uh, it's talking about. You know, who is this? Yeah, this is talking about the Israelite foreigners. Yeah, in you Rome, know? living in Rome. In Rome. Yeah. This was a letter the Apostle Paul yep. uh, wrote to the Israelites in Rome. He was talking to them. That's right, that's right. It says, because that, when they knew the Most High, they, he's explaining to them, the situation of the Gentiles, you know? This is what he's explaining to them about. Because that when they knew the Most High, how did they know the Most High? Back when they were uh, uh, keeping the law, statutes, and commandments in the land of Israel. He said, because that when they knew the Most High, they glorified him not as the Most High. Neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations started worshiping different idols, started going off, committing bestiality, uh, being uh, homosexual, lesbians and all that, and, and many other things, adulterers. Oh, they had a saying, when in Rome, do as the Romans do. Kind. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> right? It, wasn't that not a saying? Yep. Yeah, that, that's what them Israelites, they adopted that saying. Well, we're in Rome, do as the Romans do. Kind. It says, because that when they knew the Most High, they glorified him not as the Most High, neither were thankful, but became foolish, I'm sorry, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. They became Gentiles. They were cut off. They were, they were shunned. 
You know, they were abhorred. They were pushed away. You know, they became strange. They became Gentiles. They became foreigners. It says, professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. Why? Because they were uh, equating every worship that you worship to the most high to those different idols whom they were around. It says, and change the glory of the incorruptible power into an image made like to a corruptible man. And that's what caused them to go away. That's why in the book of 1 Corinthians, the 12th chapter, it tells you that they were carried away by these dumb idols. That's how they became. You were Gentiles carried away, ca carried away unto these dumb idols, even as you were led. It says, um, made like to corruptible man and to birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things, Wherefore, the Mosai also gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. So that's what happened to those Israelite foreigners. Uh, like the statement you mentioned, even as ye were led. Yep. And that takes us back to the history. Anti uh, an example, Antiochus Epiphanes. Remember the decree that he made? Yep. That the Israelites should stop uh, uh, circumcising themselves, right. circumcising their seed. That's an example of them being led. Going back to Antiochus Epiphanes. Alexander the Creep, you know, Ptolemy. You had Israelites worshiping Ptolemy II as Serapis Christus. You know, those are all examples. That's right, that's right. And, that, and that's all, like, like the scriptures say, that the um, devising of idols was the beginning of spiritual fornication. Uh, this is Psalms chapter 106. And, uh, I mean, there's a lot here, so I just want to jump around. Yeah, uh, I started at 32. They angered him also at the waters of strife, so that it went ill with Moses for their sakes, because they provoked his spirit, so that he spake inadvisedly with his lips. They did not destroy the nations concerning whom the Lord commanded them, but were mingled among the heathen and learned their works. And that's what, what uh, caused those Israelites to be pulled away. That's why, why do you think uh, Samaria fell? To the Assyrians, how, how, do you, how do you think we were able to be uh, brought over into the land of, uh, of, of uh, Assyria to serve captivity under the Assyrians? Because Israel was going off, totally going off. It says, but were mingled among the heathen and learned their works, and they served their idols, which were a snare unto them. Because the Lord said, look, if you do it after the manner of these nations, the Lord is going to spew you out of that land the way he spewed out those heathens before you. And that was the criteria. A uh, quick precept for you. Uh, the book of Jeremiah 15 and 1. Then said the Lord unto me, Though Moses and Samuel stood before me, yet my mind could not be toward this people. Yeah. Cast them out of my sight and let them go forth. Yeah. Cast them out of my sight and let them go forth. So what did the Lord do? He basically spewed Israel out of, out of, out of, out of his face. Yeah. You know? Yeah, I just went to, and I'm kind of jumping the gun, so to speak. Um, this is uh, Acts 11 chapter, right? Acts 11 chapter in the first verse. And this is the Red Bible because it got, you know, it got precepts in it. It says, and the apostles and brethren that were in Jerusalem heard that the Gentiles had also received the word of the Most High because this is, this was after the the um, the uh, act of uh, Peter and uh, Cornelius getting together, okay? And then Peter Peter making a statement. Let me find that statement re real quick. Okay, this is um, Acts the ten chapter. Okay, Acts ten twenty eight. It says, and he said unto them, Ye know. how that it was an unlawful thing for a man that is a Jew, meaning a proper Jew, meaning uh, um, uh, uh, circumcised on the eighth day, you know, kept the high, brought up under the law. You know, when they turned 12, they became men. You know, they kept the Passover and so forth under the, the exact law of, of, a, of an Israelite, of a, of a Jew, of the tribe of Judah. It says um, how that it is unlawful thing for a man that is a Jew to keep company or come unto one of another nation. Just like 
okay, these cats that's in the black conscience community, they're of another nation, even though they're illness. So we're not going to hang out with them. That's why we get on Al-Azhar, Al Al Alizé, about hanging out with them, man, chopping it up with them, as, uh, so to speak, because that's nothing but confusion. Why would you hang out with, with, with people that are uh, into something that you're not into, man? And then they curse your God. Don't you know there was, you can get that for me. Don't you know there was an Israelitess uh, um, uh, man whose mother was an Israelite and his father was an Egyptian? And they had a little striving. This was, this was during the time of uh, the children of Israel coming out of uh, Egypt. And he, and he cursed the Most High. So what they did was they put him in ward. If you, don't, if you can get it, you get it. If not, I'll find it. All right. Um, so, so what happened was they put him in ward, and then they went and re re uh, uh, um, inquired of the Lord as to what they should do to this man, meaning they went to uh, spiritual men that the Most High talked to these spiritual men, and they said, what should we do about this matter? Because this man um, didn't put no respect on the Most High's name. And that's why Birdman, Birdman got mad. I understand why he got mad, you know? I mean, somebody don't put respect on my name or whatever. I'm not, I'm not going to kill the person, but I'm going to be, I'm like, look, why don't you put some respect on it, man? <laughs> put some respect on it. This, this man didn't want to put no respect on, um, that's how you spell it for now. That's how you say it, brother. You know, the credit goes to Birdman. Hey, but anyway, he didn't respect uh, the most high. Because he, he, he gave him a bad name. He said he, 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 uh, he blasphemed his name. So what did the Most High tell him to do? He said, kill that guy. And I'm pretty sure at that scene, they were kind of like, you know, the, you know they were smart, but they were like, damn, Most High ain't playing, man. Most High said, kill that guy. We're going to have to kill that guy. So why would you hang out with guys, even though they're Israelites, why would you hang out? There's no way in the hell I'm going to hang out with a dude that calls on the name of Yahiah. There's no way I'm going to hang out with a nigga like that, man. Or you shire. Because that's, that, that's not the most high's name. Uh, this is Leviticus 24 and 10. And the son of an Israelitish woman whose father was an Egyptian went out among the children of Israel. So what happened was when they were in when Egypt, you had e Egyptians or Mizraim, the people of Mizraim, getting with our woman. And then you had Israelite men getting with Mizraim women or, or Egyptian women or Kemet women, man. You know how Jake is, man. And then she had a son by this, by this man. And when they went out into the wilderness, you know, she, she was an Israelite. So she took her son, which was a, a heathen, a mamza, into a, uh, well, can we use that word? Okay, I'm going to look it up, though. But, yeah, to go to the. Yeah, you're a ba bastard. Yeah, yeah. A mamza. Yep. And um, showing you that she was probably not Egyptian. The man either died. You know, it, it doesn't tell you what happened to the father. He either stayed behind or he was in the Egyptian military and he, and he died or whatever the case may be. Based on what we're reading, the father wasn't around. All right. So here this Israelite woman took her son. Which showing you that the spirit come from the father. Whatever your father is, that's what you are, okay? It's not how black you are, how so-called white you are, you know? It's the spirit that's in you. So here they are. They went out into the wilderness or went through the, uh, the sea, the, the Suez, uh, that was the Suez Canal. And they went into the wilderness. And this was the beginning of them going into the wilderness. So the first generation was there. And, um, you know, he was, he was so-called hanging out and chilling, chopping it up with other Israelites. And they all knew that the, the name of the Most High, Yahweh, because Moses done taught them. But, but, but before Moses taught them, they, they knew before that that the Most High's name was Yahweh. And the other nations knew that the Most High's name is Yahweh because you got these guys from the GOCC. And we keep get, getting on them guys, but that's the spirit on us getting on them, talking about, oh, the reason why we don't use the name uh, Yahweh is because the other nations used it. Well, wait a minute. So big, big deal. The other nations knew the name. They knew the power of the Most High. 
It says that the uh, the Mosai's name is fearful among the heathen, something like that. that yep, that's that's what it says. That's what it says. So, like like the story of like I did a uh, a little sit down on Balaam and Belak, man, and it said in in Numbers uh, twenty four that it said the man whose eyes were open said. So what did that mean? How, what, what did it mean by his eyes were open? His spiritual eyes were open. In other words, the Most High, you know, uh, gave him intellect. You know, get, get, you know, let him let him see the future. Then he went and told uh, uh, Balak, the king of Moab, that look, man, let me tell you something. You're not gonna curse these people, but this was gonna happen to you. He said, these people that you want to curse. At the end of days, they're going to kick your ass. They're going to kick Esau's ass. They're going to kick all these different nations that you see around about you. He said they're going to kick all of their asses. That's what they're going to do. So if the Mosai came to him like that and showed uh, a Balaam, a man that was not an Israelite, that said that if he, when he died, that he, he'd die and come back as an Israelite, I'm merely uh, paraphrasing, if the Mosai came to him, didn't, the most, didn't, didn't he have to know the Most High's name? Now, I don't tell you that in the scriptures, but the Most High worked with this man. The Most High showed this man something was gonna ha- that was going to happen to that ha- haven't even happened yet. Yeah. That's going to happen more than 2,000 years in the future. He said, ultimately, this is what these people are going to do to you. They're going to jack, they're going to mess you up, and they're going to mess up all the mother nations around about you. And then the Canaanites, they spoke, like, a, like if you put in Canaanite uh, language or ancient Canaanite language, it's going to be the ancient Hebrew because we were from that same region, man. So them Canaanites spoke Hebrew. And then they, had, they, gave, they gave their children Hebrew names, and they knew about Alashadja, and they heard the name Yahweh. So, so you, come on. And then, and then uh, Elder, uh, Elder Rakar said, uh, uh, this is this is going back maybe seven eight years ago, and he told me that he said no. He said on a video he said, "Oh, the reason why the name of the Most High is not Yahweh, Esau put the Illuminati put that in there, something to that effect." So when I did my check and I found out the real name, he ain't find out shit, man. Okay. But anyway, I'm um, going back to that thing. That's that shows you the importance of that name. That when this guy didn't put no respect on uh, the Mosai's name, that the Mosai said, look, kill that, kill that little mamza. Yeah. All right. uh, this is uh, back in, in Leviticus 24 and 10, uh, in the center of it. It says, uh, and this son of the Israelitish woman and a man of Israel strove together in the camp. So he was fighting with a Jake. And the Israelitish woman's son blasphemed the name of Yahweh and cursed and they brought him unto Moses, and his mother's name was Shelomith, the daughter of Debri of the tribe of Dan. And they put him inward that the mind of, the, of Yahweh might be showed them. And Yahweh spake unto Moses, saying, Bring forth him that hath cursed without the camp, and let all that heard him lay their hands upon his head, and let all the congregation stone him. And thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel, saying, Whosoever curseth his power shall bear his sin. And he that blasphemeth the name of Yahweh, he shall surely be put to death. And all the congregation shall certainly stone him, as well the stranger as he that is born in the land. When he blasphemeth the name of Yahweh, shall he be put to death. So put some speck on the Most High's name. And I think that guy's back. I think I know who he is, too. All right, all right, so, um, you know, as uh, Pastor Tar went, you know, went over in uh, uh, the book of uh, Acts 11 chapter, dealing with Cornelius in uh, um, Acts 10 chapter, where, where it spoke, uh, spoke about, uh, um, 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 you know, this an, an unlawful thing that of a man that is a Jew to keep company of one that is of another nation, which, you know, Lord's will, we get a chance, we're going to go over that, that word. But uh, I just want to go here to the book of Habakkuk because, see, that's where the misconception comes. But the Lord set it up that way because the Lord has stumbling blocks, you know, in the scriptures, you know, for, for those that he doesn't want to get the understanding. Yeah, he said um, it's a mystery. Yep. What is that, uh, Colossians? Yep. yep. 
1 and 27, the mystery that is among the Gentiles, among the Israelite right. foreigners. Right. And this is the book of Habakkuk, chapter 1, verse 5. It says, Behold thee among the heathen, and regard, and wonder marvelously. Why? Because, you know, when, when, when Israel went off, when they got pushed to the side, you know, to the uh, Jews, the southern kingdom, they were like, man, there's no more hope for you people. You, you're just basically like heathens. So they had no clue or no idea what, what was going to happen in the future, even though the Lord wrote it, wrote about it in the Old Testament, you know, to show you that they're not open. That veil was still over their eyes, even though they were masters of the Old Testament, masters of the law. Their eyes were still blinded. It says, Behold, ye, am ye among the heathen, and regard and wonder marvelously, for I will work a work in your days which you will not believe, though it be told you. Why? Because to them, the, the Israel was just gone. You know, that's what when you read in, in um, um, 2 Kings, the 17th chapter, it said that all the seed of Israel was cast out except for the tribe of Judah. They were the only ones that were there, and eventually they were cast out too. So seeing that the Jews knew that, because they knew the history, they knew the law, they knew the, 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 uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the Tanakh, you know, they, their whole mindset was like, look, the only ones that is here is just us, and that's it. The other, the other, the other uh, 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 tribes, they're, they're lost. They're out there they're, as those heathens are, you know. So that was their attitude about it, like the parable of, uh, of the uh, prodigal son. That was Judah, Benjamin, Levi, the southern kingdom, and the, and the, and the remnant of those that stayed there. And, and, and the, uh, the uh, prodigal son was the Israelite foreigners that had fallen away, you know. So the Lord is, is, is rejoicing that these Israelite uh, foreigners are being brought back to the fold because this is his plan. Let me go back to Acts 10, 28. It says, and he said unto them, ye know how that it is unlawful, an unlawful thing for a man that is a Jew, a proper Jew, to keep company or come unto an, one of another nation but the Most High has showed me that I should not call any man common or unclean. This was the Israelite, all right? It said, Therefore came I unto you without gainsaying, as soon as I was sent for, I asked therefore for what intent ye have sent for me. And it says, And Cornelius said, Four days ago I was fasting until, the, until this hour, and at the ninth hour, I prayed in my house, and behold, a man stood before me in bright uh, clothing and, and, and said, Cornelius, thy prayer is heard, and thine arms are had in remembrance in the sight of the Most High. So this guy was so, this was the super, this is the most humblest Edomite that ever lived. This dude was so bad, this devil was so bad, that he got the most out of it and said, damn, I like this Edomite. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How stupid can you be? <laughs> How stupid can you be? How can you be so stupid? That's why uh, you, people, people know, even the ones that hate us, they know where the men are. Baloo knows where the, where the men are of the Lord. Alizé, he knows where the men are the Lord, okay? All these guys know where the men are the Lord, all right? Because if you're teaching otherwise from what we're teaching, you... Look, the most I ain't dealing with you, period, all right? But anyway, now let's go back to the 28th verse, right? It says, okay, which we broke this down before. Another nation, right? And the other nation is Alo. Fulos. And it's two, it's a compound word, right? It um it means foreigner, right? Let me go to the compound word. Okay, it's, it, the, it, the uh, second part of the com compound word, which is uh, fula, 
which means a tribe. In the New Testament, all persons descending from one of the 12 sons of the patriarch uh, uh, Jacob, a nation people. Let me read that again. This is from the word Fula, a tribe in the New Testament, all persons descending from one of the 12 sons of the patriarch Jacob. So what is it telling you? That Cornelius had to had to had to come from one of the twelve one of the twelve sons. It didn't tell you whether he was a Judite, Benjamite, Levite, but he was he was from one of the twelve sons. And that's why that's that's you have something? Yeah. Um, the book of James, one and one. It says James, the servant of the Heavenly Father and of the Lord Yahweh Shai, to the twelve tribes. Mm which are scattered abroad, greeting. So why would James write that letter? And why would he specify 12 tribes? Because even now we taught, you know, even back in the school, the old school, it was taught that, that uh, the 10 tribes came over here. But what was not taught was there was a scattering of the rest of the tribes still hanging around Jerusalem and outside of Jerusalem. If that's not the case, James wouldn't have wrote that. He wouldn't have wrote to the 12 tribes which are scattered abroad, Greeting. He clearly says 12 tribes. Not just Judah, Benjamin, and Levi. That's right. Yeah, and that's why this is written. Isaiah 11 and um, 13. The envy also of Ephraim shall depart, and the adversaries of Judah shall be cut off. Ephraim shall not envy Judah, and Judah shall not vex Ephraim. Because that's what it was going on. It was a vexation, you know, because the Jews, were, they, weren't they weren't allowing the uh, other Israelites co to come into the fold. And what about Anna, the prophetess? Well, she was called a prophetess. Her father was of the what? Of the tribe of Asher. That's located in the book of Luke. All right, so um, going back to uh, Psalms, uh, Psalms 106 and 37. Yea, they sacrificed their sons and their daughters unto devils and shed innocent blood, even the blood of their sons and of their daughters whom they sacrificed unto the idols of Canaan, and the land was polluted with blood. Thus were they defiled with their own works and went a-whoring with their own inventions. Therefore was the wrath of the Lord kindled against his people insomuch that he abhorred his own inheritance. So he avoided his own inheritance. And that's why this is written here in the uh, book of Hosea. Uh, just bear with me one second. It's the book of uh, Hosea, the uh, eighth chapter and the eighth verse. And it says, Israel is swallowed up. See, because they, they became dis destroyed, destructed. Israel is swallowed up. Now shall they be among the Gentiles as a vessel wherein is no pleasure. Because the Most High wasn't taking pleasure in that vessel anymore because they became defiled. Um, this is... Uh First Peter's one first verse one. It says, and this was after it was established that the um, these Gentiles were allowed to come in, which were Israelites, all right? Uh, first Peter one verse one. It says, Peter, an apostle of Yahweh Shai, Mashiach, to the strangers scattered throughout Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and about. Uh, uh, Bethsinia. Now, if you look up the word stranger, right? It's from G3927, right? And it says, Pari, uh, Pari Padimos, which means one who comes from a foreign country into a city or land to reside there by the side of the natives. A stranger, sojourning in a strange place, a foreigner. So when Peter, when Peter was, uh, when he um, said what he said in First Peter's one verse one, and he called them strangers, he was talking about Israelites that were outside of the of the of Jerusalem, or outside of the so-called land of Canaan.
that came in. And then you had Israelites that knew that there were Israelites that were born in foreign lands that came to keep the Passover, like the, the um, account in, uh, what is that, Acts, the second chapter. That was talking about Israelites that were living in other lands. Like you had, uh, you had the um, Hellenized, what do you call it, the Greek Jews, the Hellenized Jews. They were living in Greece and Egypt, but they knew that they were Israelites. Their first language could have been whatever language, whatever, whatever land that they were born in, but they knew some broken Hebrew, and they knew to come uh, together three times out of the, uh, out of the uh, year. Yeah. And that was to Jerusalem to keep the feast. But then you had another group of Israelites that didn't know that they were Israelites, and they saw what was going on in Jerusalem and those surrounding areas, and then when uh, uh, Paul and them went to the other, the other uh, trees, they, they, those people were, were raised up as being Greeks or Parthians or, or Galatians or uh, Elabites or whatever. And then they heard the word. They heard the word. And then they said, they said, oh, no, we're Israelites too. So as they were, they were, they were uh, grown men and grown women. But the grown men, they had to say, well, now you got to get, uh, you gotta get um, uh, circumcised. That's why you had that big situation in the book of Acts, the 15th chapter. Matter of fact, let's go to that. Uh, this is the book of uh, this is the book of Acts, the uh, 15th chapter, and we're gonna start right right at the first verse. This is Acts 15 and one. And certain men which came down from Judea taught the brethren and said, Except you be circumcised after the manner of Moses, you cannot be saved. And really, they were supposed to be circumcised, you know. But the uh, salvation part really came through faith. And Paul went off. Paul went off from it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so, so it says, um, When therefore Paul and Barnabas had no small dissension and disputation with them, because Paul... And Barnabas was cursing out those uh, righteous Pharisees, you know. He was cursing them out because they were trying to get the, uh, uh, they were trying to put the, a, a burden of keeping the whole law upon the Israelite foreigners when they weren't even ready for that. Yeah, because that's a hard thing, man. When a man is fully grown, yep. for him to, you see, when you're a baby, that's, you know, it's normal. Yeah, you have you circumcise the eighth day. But when you're a, a fully grown man, to have your rod circumcised, <laughs> It's not, it's not like cutting off a fingernail, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, it's a lot more complicated than that, man, you know? For a grown man, that pain, you know what proved that? The, uh, what, what, was, uh, what nationality was that? The, the, uh, the Philistines. The Phil, they, they, had them, <laughs> they had them circumcised. <laughs> they had them circumcised. Uh, Simeon and Levi said, look, you, you want to deal with our women, you got to circumcise yourself. So they went and did it, and they were in pain, brother. Yeah. And that's when Israel pounced on them. So there's the proof, you know. For, it's a hard thing for a grown man to get circumcised. It says, when therefore Paul and Barnabas had no small dissension and disputation with them, they determined that Paul and Barnabas and certain other of them should go up to Jerusalem unto the apostles and elders about this question. And being brought on their way by the, by the church, they passed through, the, through Phenice, and Samaria declaring the conversion of the Gentiles, Israelite foreigners, and they caused great joy unto all the brethren. Why? Because it, it, all of Israel was coming back together again. And let me just say this. In the auto mechanic world, you got basic mechanics, right? You got apprentice mechanics. You got guys that know how to change starters, they know how to change alternators, they know how to change oil, you know, change tires, maybe brakes. But then you get, but then they don't know how to break down the engine. They don't know how to rebuild an engine or a transmission. You got Israelite groups out there that can only change oil, and here they are trying to do an engine job. Now what's going to happen if you take take a guy that only only know he only know how to do an en uh, oil change and change your brakes, and you have him, you know, because of his pride, can you do an engine? Yeah, I can do an engine. I rebuild your engine. 
man, you, man, first of all, you ain't going to get your car for another two months. And when you wind up getting it, man, that car ain't going to, it ain't going to start, ain't going to do a damn thing. So you, you bootleg camps out there, stop trying to build engines when all you can do is change brakes and change oil. That's why you're looking stupid, man. Cornelius is an Israelite. He was an Israelite. He's an Israelite today. He's probably amongst right now. And the reason why you can't get it is because the Most High is not dealing with you, man. Verse 4. And don't, and don't call a debate because I'm not going to yeah. attempt to break it down to you, man. Yeah. It's a waste of time. Just like that debate that uh, 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 IUIC would stand for... Uh, Islam united in Christ. <laughs> Islam united in Christ. Because that's what they go under that 501c3. It's under the religion of Islam. They got videos on it now. They come with Sakari did one in uh, 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 Israel, uh, Ch Chicago. Uh, was it uh, uh, Israel tried and tried and refined? They did one and they got it where they said that the 501c3 is under Islam, Islamic. All right, so, you know, hey, you guys, is I guess IU, IUIC stands for Islam United in Christ, you know? Which makes them terrorists. Well, it might be terrorists. It is, it's an Islamic organization, you know? But anyway, what was I saying? I lost my thought. Um, then we'll go ahead. I'll come back. Uh, back in Acts 15 and, um, and 4. And then when they were come to Jerusalem, they received of the church. Yeah, they had a debate with some Christian church. That was the most boring debate I have ever seen in my entire life. If you ever, if you ever are suffering from insomnia, just put that video on and I guarantee you'll go right to sleep. Like a baby. That was a boringest. Man, I wouldn't. See, that's why we don't debate. Because it's a waste of God. It's a waste of time. And did any of them Christians, them old ass Christians get converted? No. The same thing with this black consciousness, Israelite debate. You got the audience, right? You got 50% 50, 50 of them is, is for Israel. The other 50% is for the uh, black conscious movement, right? At the end of the debate, you know what? When everybody leaves, if they were Israelite, they leave in the Israelite. If they were a black consciousness, they leave in the black consciousness. So who the hell? But then they talk about, we won. How the hell you won? You got half, you, you got half. Israelites and you gotta have black comedic people. You don't see no black comedic people getting up and <laughs> walking over there. That's how you know who won. Oh, they won because, you know, they got converts, man. So it's ridiculous to have a debate because people have pride. That's one thing they have in, 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 in them is pride. And when they've been studying something for 15 years, 20 years, 30 years, you think you're gonna change them? You ain't going to change them, man. You ain't going to change them. Unless the most I set them up to be the elect. Then they're going to be changed, man. Oh, yeah, when uh, Peter and John, when they, had that, when they went out and taught, after they healed that man at the temple gate, 3,000 souls were converted that's right. that very day. So that's doing something. That's making a dent, you know, in comparison to that uh, black consciousness shit, you know? <laughs> Or Nate going over to that uh, that so-called Christian church. Yeah, that's all I had to say. Uh, verse four, and when they were come, sorry, sorry, that's back you up with the scripture, uh, Psalms one ten and three. It says, "The people shall be willing in the day of thy power, and the and the beauties of holiness from the womb of the morning, thou hast the dew of thy youth." Now. If we happen to get the spiritual power, right, and we're raising people from the dead, let's say we raise up Masha from the dead and Abba from the dead. You know what I'm saying? They can see the, the studio class and you see Mo sitting, sitting here and Abba sitting over there. You know what I'm saying? What do you think them guys are going to do? What if we say we went to the cemetery where, where, where Masha was buried, King Masha, and, and we got it on video, right? And it's called Masha is Risen, risen uh, from the Dead by the Apostles of GMS. 
go see that video. What? <laughs> so that's some bullshit, but let me watch that shit. Right. And then you actually see Mo coming back, but he comes back as a young man, right. as a 20-year-old young man. Huh. Huh. And then we go to where Abba was buried, and we raise him up. Huh. And then we salute him, huh. and then the ships come down. Huh. What you think them guys go? First of all, they're going to talk shit. Huh. Nah, that's bullshit. This stage, that's yeah. acting, yeah. man. You know? Okay, well, when you come down to the camp, 34th Street, and you see uh, 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 Abba, a uh, uh, high priest Abba, or uh, all the Abba, uh, and then you see uh, King Mashar stand there, you know what I'm saying? And then you see it, you can rub your eyes. What you think, what you think your people going to do? Well, some of them are so brainwashed, they're going to stay with you. You know? They might say, well, them are two devils. Them are, them, them, them are two devils impersonating my shine. Because you, you niggas are simple, man. You simple-ass niggas, you know? But in the day of thy power, thy people shall be willing. And you're going to find out. And a lot of you guys, you guys in, in uh, uh, Islam uniting Christ, all right? <laughs> you, hey, you window shoppers, you better start buying, my man. All right? You better start purchasing. Stop window, stop window shopping. The store is getting ready to close. You better start buying. And all you other groups, you're gonna find you're gonna find out who the true men of the Most High, Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai are. All right. A clearance sale at Great Millstone. Man. Right. <laughs> you you know? Get your final purchases. <laughs> all the wisdom's being cleared out. You know, clearance sale. <laughs> Uh, back at Acts 15 and uh, 4. And when they would come up to Jerusalem, they were received of the church and of the apostles and elders, and they declared all things that the Most High had done with them. But there rose up certain of the sect of the Pharisees, which believed they were righteous, yeah. saying that it was needful to circumcise them and command them to uh, keep the law of Moses. You know, which technically they were right, but at that time, you know, they had to, be, you know, they had to come into the faith. They had to be grounded. They had to be sealed. Yeah, like the Apostle Paul said, let every man be fully, fully persuaded in, in his own mind. Right. And that's a hell of a persuasion to get a grown man to, <laughs> again, I got to jump back on it, to get him to circumcise himself, have himself circumcised. It says, and the apostles and elders came together for to consider of this matter. And when there had been much disputing, Peter rose up and said unto them, men and brethren, you know, how that a good while ago the Most High made choice among us that the Gentiles, Israelite foreigners, by my mouth should hear the word of the gospel and believe. Yeah, he's making reference to uh, Peter, uh, Peter and Cornelius, the meeting of Peter and Cornelius. It says, and the Most High which knoweth the hearts, bear them witness, giving them the Holy Spirit, even as he did unto us. Why? Because they were part of the elect. They were Israelites that, that, that had lost their way, but they were part of the elect. So the Lord was making a way for them to be brought back into the fold because there's one fold that had to be fulfilled, you know? It says, and put no difference between us and them, purifying their hearts by faith. That's what it's good to say, that there's no difference between the Jew and the Greek. Why? Because they're all Israelites, you know? And when they were woken up to the faith, that sealed the deal. You know, that was that middle wall of partition being broken down. I got a precept for you. The book of Isaiah 11, and uh, let me start at 9. They shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountain, for the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. And in that day there shall be a root of Jesse which shall stand for an ensign of the people, to which shall the Gentiles seek and, and his rest shall be glorious. And that was an example of that with uh, Cornelius, uh, Peter and Cornelius. Because yep. that ensign was Yahweh Shai. Yep. Now what did Peter teach Cornelius about? He told him about Yahweh Shai. Yep. The same thing with the Ethiopian eunuch. The Israelite in his chariot, when, when Philip, this time it was Philip, yep. he went to him and he taught him about what? Yahweh Shai beginning at Isaiah the 53rd chapter. Yeah, because even Apollos, which was great in deeds and in words, you know, he didn't understand about Yahweh Shai. He just knew about the laws and the baptism of John. And he was mighty in works, but he didn't understand about Yahweh Shai until uh, Aquila broke, broke it down to him. Then, then he got it. Yeah, Apollos would be like a guy read up in IUIC. 
<laughs> until he comes. Then he meets uh, with uh, Paul, the Apostle Paul. Then he would leave IUIC and go to a great millstone. Because <laughs> hey, he, he got the, the, wor the way was explained to him more perfectly, you know. Because the IUIC, they're all about, even though they don't fully keep the law, to be justified by the law, they're all about the law, the law, the law. The scriptures say the letter killeth, but the spirit uh, minister of life, you know. It says, now therefore, why tempt ye the Most High to put a yoke upon the neck of the disciples, which neither our fathers nor we were able to bear? You know, and that's the point. And then really, the whole, the whole thing boils down to, to our grace through Yahweh Shai. You know, because at the end, it's not of works, you know, but of him that called, the Most High that calls. You know, it's a gift. So if we, it, whoever is to be saved or delivered, it's a gift. It's not how many works you do, but you do the works to show your faith. You know, the scriptures say, give diligence to make thy calling and election sure. You know, so that's the reason why the works are done. Yeah, well, the Apostle Paul said, he said, not of works, least any man should boast. Well, I did more works than you and blah, 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 blah you know. And it wasn't about that. That's why the spirit abounded so heavy in, in the Apostle Paul that he did so many more works than anybody else. But still, even at that, he said, look, you know, I did more works abundantly, but still, you know, that doesn't mean anything, you know, because at the end of the day, you're going to be delivered if you're part of the elect, you know. And it ain't about, oh, I did more works than you. No, that don't, that don't count. The works are done to show, that, show your faith in that you believe in your Yahweh by Shem Shai by doing the things that they told you to do. It says, um, uh, verse 11, but we believe that through the grace of our Lord Yahweh Shai, we shall be saved even as they. See, through the grace of Yahweh Shai. Then all the multitude kept silence and gave audience to Barnabas and Paul, declaring what miracles and wonders the Most High had wrought among the Gentiles, uh, Israelite foreigners, by them. And after they had held their peace, James answered, saying, Men and brethren, Hearken unto me, Simeon hath declared how that the Most High the first did visit the Gentiles. That's uh, 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 Peter. <laughs> uh, Simeon had declared how the Most High the first did visit the Gentiles, which is, which is the Israelite foreigners. That was through uh, um, uh, um, Cornelius to take out of them a people for his name. Because the only people that the name of the Most High is placed upon are the Israelites. No other people on the planet. I don't give a damn if they stand on their head or not. They had not. They never received the name of the Most High. Yahweh uh, This is uh, Isaiah 63 and 17. O Lord, why hast thou made us to err from thy ways and harden our heart uh, from thy fear? Return for thy servant's sake the tribes of thine inheritance. Why? Because we were scattered. The people of thy holiness have possessed it but a little while. Our adversaries have trodden down thy sanctuary. We are thine. Thou never bearest rule over them. They were not called by thy name. Yes. I got to back you up. Um, Isaiah 40 and 15. Behold, the nations are as a drop of a bucket Count. and are counted as the small <laughs> dust of the balance. Behold, he taketh up the isles as a very little thing. And Lebanon is not, and Lebanon is not sufficient to burn, nor the beast thereof sufficient for a burnt offering. All nations before him as nothing, and they accounted to him less than nothing in vanity. Time. All right. So back at Acts 15 and 15, it says, and a matter of fact, I started 14 again. Simeon had declared how that the Most High at the first did visit the Gentiles, Israelite foreigners, to take out of them a people for his name. And to this agree the words of the prophets as it is written. After this, I will return and will build again the tabernacle of David, which is fallen down. Like Elder Apostle Tal said, he was the first to say it. For you to build the tabernacle of David, you have to have all the tribes. Right. You can't just have Judah, Benjamin, and Levi. Because in Dav David's court, he had all the tribes. Right. So how can you build the house of David and you just have Judah, Benjamin, and Levi? You've got to have all the tribes, man. That's right. And we found out through James that you had the 12 tribes scattered back then. So the remnants of them, had to, had, they had to go recover them to help start building the tabernacle of David. Come. And I will build again the ruins thereof, and I will set it up, that the residue of men might seek after the Lord, 
and all the Gentiles upon whom my name is called, save the Lord who doeth all these things. Known unto the Most High are all his works from the beginning of the world. Because the Most High knows everywhere where there's an Israelite at, no matter what the Israelite looks like, no matter how tall or how, or how short or how fat or how skinny or how black or how white or how whatever color he is or whatever, however, however hard uh, his eyes be chinky, whatever, he knows who, who is an Israelite, what spirit in is each body is an Israelite and who's not. No matter what he looks like. That's it. He could look like a, a so-called white man. He could look like a Chinese, Jap. The Lord knows what spirit is in that body. That's right. Because that, cuts, that cuts anybody that says that we call white people the devil. We don't because we got, we got quote-unquote white people, white people in our camp. Which, which, which are Israelites. You know, they just happen to look that way. That's right. That's right. Oh, man, that's heavy, man. What you just read, known unto the Most High are all his works. Yeah, because he created them. Con, con. 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 All right, let me go back and read that again. Um, I'll start at 15 again. And to this agree the words of the prophets as it is written. Con. Okay. Okay, um, matter of fact, I started at 14. It says, Simeon hath declared how the Most High at the first did visit the Gentiles to take out of them a people for his name, and to this agree the words of the prophets as it is written. After this, I will return and will build again the tabernacle of David, which is fallen down, and I will build again the ruins thereof, and I will set it, uh, set it up that the residue of men might seek after the Lord and all the Gentiles upon whom my name is called Say of the Lord who doeth all these things, known unto the Most High are all his works from the beginning of the world. Now, there was another precept. Right now, it got right now. That one right now. Now, you know what I noticed? These people that put this red book together, which is Jehovah Witness, they, Scott, they know the scriptures because you can know by the precepts that they did extensive studies. But anytime it goes to the Gentiles, it says Gentiles. Like in the uh, 14 verses that Simeon have declared how the Most High at the first did visit the Gentiles to take out of them a people for his name. Now that, that says a lot in that one verse, but there's no precept. I wonder why. Because they know where it's going to lead to, you know? It says in the 15 verse, right, it says, and to disagree, uh, let me jump up. Um, it says, then all the multitude kept silence and gave audience to Barnabas and Paul, declaring what miracles and wonders the Most High had wrought among the Gentiles. This is the ongoing saga of this whole Canadian thing. All right? Uh, by them. So it was more than just Cornelius. It wasn't no one guy, Cornelius. He's a Gentile, let him in. It, that opened the door for many Gentiles. Thousands of Gentiles. Why do you think Paul went up all up into Asia Minor? Those are all Gentiles, man. It says, and after that, <clears throat> and after they <clears throat> had held their peace, James answered, saying, Men and brethren, hearken unto me. Uh, Simeon have declared how the Most High the first did visit the Gentiles, <clears throat> um, starting with Cornelius, all right, to take out of them a people for his name. So it was more than just Cornelius. So there was a whole heap of Gentiles, so you can understand, a whole mess. It said 15, and to disagree the words of the prophets as it is written. After this, I will return. Now, wait a minute. After this, I will return. That's N. O. Let me go to O. Okay, good. Hold, hold on to all four of them scriptures because we want to read all four of them. But before that, in the 15th verse, it says, And to disagree the words of the prophet, f prophets as it is written. Now, right there in the 15th verse, 
It says N. What, what does N take you back to? Isaiah 11 and 10. So let's go back to it. Isaiah 11 and 10. Okay. Uh, this is the book of uh, Isaiah. It's so pretty. It's so pretty. It's pretty. It's so pretty. <laughs> go with Sizzler. We go with Sizzler. The book of Isaiah, chapter 11, and our verse 10. And in that day, there shall be a root. And this. <laughs> I didn't mean to come out like that, but but you know what? When you when you read and you 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 presume that people will get it, they can't get it. So you got to answer every question, like like Aria, <laughs> and like Aria used to say, get all the meat off that bone. You get all the meat off that bone. That's why I said I made one video a couple of weeks ago, mo most likely. I said these guys, these other Israelite groups, they touch the surface, man. They, they remember, oh, no, in, in the sit-down I did, the, the live sit-down. I said, they're in, you got a pool, you got the two feet, you got the three feet, you got the two feet for the babies, you know, and then, then you got the five feet, and then you got the six feet, uh, feet part of the pool. If you don't know how to swim and you're five foot two, guess what? You're going to drown. And si They said, this nigga drowned in six feet of water. What's up with him? Well, he didn't know how to drown. It might, he might as well have been in the, uh, the six feet or the 12 feet. He going to drown any goddamn way. <laughs> right? Yeah. Well, his ass was supposed to be in the two feet and the three feet. Right. With the kitties. Because right. you, you got people in pools that, that, that won't go in the 12 feet, man. Because they'll drown unless they know how to swim. All right? So it's the same thing with this truth. You check out a lot of these different camps. And they're on different levels. Some are deeper than others. Like the uh, ISUPK, they're in the two feet. Them are, them, them are basic Israelites, man. Them guys hit them basic scriptures. There's nothing deep about them, you know? Hey, if we, if we ever went down to one of them camps, man, like to Harlem, oh, they'll, they'll shit in their pants, man. They'll, they'll, they'll knee, their knees will start knocking and all that. Because we'll go to ask some questions, and that, that happened with Peshai. He went down to D.C., right. and he would put his hands up, and they acted like they didn't see him. Because right. none of them guys, there's a couple of them that are kind of somewhat deep. But them guys, well, when I say deep, um, maybe four feet of water. Right. ISUPK, they are either in two feet of water or four feet of water. They ain't in no six feet. They, ain't, they damn sure ain't diving off the diving board, man. All right? Yeah. All right, go ahead. This is um, Ezekiel chapter 47 and verse 5, straight to the point. This is, this is dealing with the living waters. It says, afterward, he measured a thousand, and it was a river that I could not pass over, for the waters were risen, waters to swim in, a river that could not be passed over. Now, if you read that chapter, it goes into the living waters, you know. Yeah, now what was I saying? Before that, it said that the water was up to the ankles, then up to the knees, then up to the hips. You know, so those are the different levels of the pool. <laughs> well, that's what Yahweh said. I told that woman at the well. Yeah, the living water. Okay, now, what was that? Um, yeah, I was going into that. So now, what scripture was we, was we in? Oh, yeah, yeah, you read it. Isaiah 11. Isaiah 11 and 10. And in that day, meaning that the day when uh was going to come on the earth, you know, for, his, for, the, for the deliverance of the elect, pretty much. It says, and in that day there shall be a root of Jesse, which shall stand for an ensign of the people. And that's what Yehoshai was. It is. It says, um, right, because I will, Je Khan, all right, it says, in that day there shall be a root of Jesse. Now, Jesse was the father of, of David, King David. Now, out of King David came out Solomon, which Solomon is Yahushai, for those who you can that can receive it. But eventually, in the process of time, Yahushai was going to come out of that lineage, 
you know, to uh to be the enzyme or the uh the sign that that the Israelite foreigners were supposed to look up to for their salvation, you know. <laughs> if he was born of a virgin birth, that that's not the Messiah. That ain't the Messiah. Plain and simple. All right. Right, because he had to be of that lineage, you know. So it, it, the Most High is specific. Had, I'm sorry. He had to be of the lineage of David. He couldn't be of the lineage of, uh, or he couldn't be of the lineage of uh, uh, Aaron. If he came out of the lineage of Aaron, Aaron's son, son, son on down, that's not the Messiah. If he came of the, uh, of the lineage of Moses, because Moses was a Levite, he's not, he's not the Messiah. If he, if he came, remember Anna the prophetess from the tribe of Asher? Let's say he was born out of her. That, that, that's not it. Unless somebody from the tribe of uh, 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 Judah, from the lineage of David, had laid with that woman. So that kills that nonsense about this uh, uh, virgin birth. You know? You had the virgin birth. You had the, uh, well, the virgin birth. Micah chapter 5 verse 2 but thou Bethlehem Ephrathah though thou be little among the thousands of Judah yet out of thee shall he come forth unto me that is to be root to be ruler in Israel whose goings forth have been from uh, con, um, Micah 5 and 2 uh, um, yet out of thee shall he come forth unto me that is to be ruler in Israel whose goings forth have been from of old from everlasting because Yahweh Shai was going to come out of out of that out of that line and he was going to come out of out of Bethlehem and he did he was born in Bethlehem but the problem was that that the Lord caused uh, uh, Joseph to go into Egypt and then when he was supposed to go back to Bethlehem he ended up going up into Galilee because the most high set it up that way you know because um, the Lord the Lord deals with controversy you know, so, you know, it was easy for you, you know, because they, they, the uh, uh, Pharisees and them had a, a, a wicked ones anyway, had a problem because they said, look, this man, he, he was born in Galilee. He wasn't born in Bethlehem. And it was easy for you. How I said, well, look, I was born in Bethlehem, but and he could have ran the story down to them, but it wasn't meant for them. You know, now was you not from Bethlehem? Yes, he was from Bethlehem, you know, but he was just raised up among the Galileans because that's the way the Lord wanted it to go down. And that was a prophecy. You know, Nazareth, Nazareth in Galilee, uh, Salakia. You know, and and that was prophecy. You know yeah, that the Gentiles saw a great light. You know, yeah. I got a precept for you. Um, back up what you're saying, Isaiah about Yahweh Shai, Isaiah eight and fourteen. It says, and he shall be for a sanctuary, but for a stone of stumbling, and for a rock of offense to both the houses of Israel and a gin and a snare to the inhabitants of Jerusalem. And many among them shall stumble, as they stumbled at that scripture, right? And fall and be broken and be snared and be taken. Yeah, because they were looking for the salvation and for the Messiah through the, uh, um, through the letter of the law and not through faith. And even though the, the letter of the law spoke about Yahweh Shai, but they, they just couldn't receive that because it wasn't given to them. But now, here it is. They were rulers and masters in Israel, you know, but here it is, the Israelite foreigners who never even touched the, the, the Torah, you know, or none, none of that. They received salvation through faith because they believed. All right, so um, going back to Isaiah uh, 11 and 10, it says, And in that day there shall be a root of Jesse which shall stand for an ensign of the people. To it shall the Gentiles seek. And his rest shall be glorious. Why? Because that's, the kingdom is going to be glorious. But the Lord has to gather his elect, you know. And then when, when the elect are gathered, then the end shall come, you know. When the, this word is preached throughout the four corners of the earth and the elect are sealed, you know, and, and these prophecies are sealed, then the end is going to come. It says, uh, and it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall set his hand again the second time to recover the remnant of his people which shall be left from Assyria and from Egypt and from Pathros and from Cush and from Elam and from Shinar and from Hamath and from the islands of the sea. And he shall set up an ensign for the nations 
and shall assemble the outcasts of Israel and gather together the dispersed of Judah from the four corners of the earth. You know, you have some? Yeah, I got a precept for you. The last statement you made about the Israelite foreigners getting it through faith. Um, the, the book of Romans, the ninth chapter and the 30th verse. What shall we say then that the Gentiles, you know, and you can interpret it, that the Gentiles which followed not after righteousness mm -hmm. have, attained the, have attained to righteousness, even the righteousness which is of faith. Yep. But Israel which followed after the law of righteousness have not attained to the law of righteousness. Wherefore? Because they sought it not by faith, but as it were by the works of the law. Right, and that's not the way it, it was coming. The, the, because... The Lord already set up the criteria. What was the criteria? Through our Abraham. Abraham believed, and therefore it was a, a, a appointed unto him or accounted unto him for righteousness. You know, so that was that was the standard that the Lord set up. Yeah, it says, Wherefore, because they sought it not by faith. When it says Israel, talking about them Jews. Yep. But as it were by the works of the law, and that's a cut to IUIC. They think they're going to find salvation by the works of the law. And they can't. And they don't and keep the law. Yeah, thank you, brother. You know, they all they got this brag, bragging and boasting about the law. They don't even keep the law. Or oh, one of their students got hammered by a, a, a what's his name? Yep. The great Alizé. Yep. The great Alizar. And the dude had, I mean, he had his face was totally shaved. And he had a, a, a big, big bush underneath his neck. Right under here. He just had a bush of hair under here. And the rest of his face was shaven. I'm like. What, what, you know, I mean, what's the sense? You know, what's the sense? You know, you, here it is. You, you can have that bit of hair right here, but then not on the rest of your face. That should look crazy, man. <laughs> wherefore, because, <laughs> wherefore, because they sought it not by faith, but as it were by the works of the law. For they stumbled at that stumbling stone. Well, they are I Islam united in Christ, right? Because well, he looked like a dude named Mustafa, or so you know, like <laughs> they should be Mustafa or <laughs> uh, uh, Ahmed or or, or Mohammed. <laughs> yeah, that's that's what them them uh, them uh, 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 them uh, Muslims. That's how they they you know they some of them shave off their mustache. Oh yeah, and yeah. some of them shave off, you know. Yeah, why would them guys just wear yeah. suits and just shave? Oh, you know, just Gun. just you know. Yeah. Just just. Shave off everything, man, and wear business suits. Yeah, you know. Yeah, that, man. Hey, man, that, hey, them guys, them people. That's why we call them guys zombies, man. Kind. We don't even really get on them that much. Right. You know. Right. You have more apostles. Uh, yeah, just one verse left. As it is written, behold, I lay in Zion a stumbling stone. This is why uh, the apostle Peter uh, congratulated uh, the apostle Paul, man, on his writings. You read stuff like that, and if you don't have that spirit with you, yep. man, you'd be totally lost. You wouldn't know what the hell that's talking about. Yep. And that's why the Apostle Peter said of the Apostle Paul, his writings in which some things are hard to be understood. As it is written, Behold, I lay in Zion a stumbling stone and a rock of offense, and whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. That's it. Go back to Isaiah. Okay. Back to Isaiah 11 and uh, 10 again. Okay. And in that day there shall be a root of Jesse which shall stand for an ensign of the people. To it shall the Gentiles seek and his rest shall be glorious. Excuse me. And it shall come to pass. Come. And in that day there shall be a root of Jesse which shall stand for an ensign of the people. To it shall the Gentiles seek and his rest shall be glorious. The Gentiles are the Israelite foreigners, because they're going to be seeking to Yahweh Shai. You know, they're not. They they didn't ha they didn't have the understanding of, of of all you know the law, statutes, and commandments back then. They the the uh, the the standard was going to be Yahweh Shai. That was how they were going to receive their salvation. Let me say this: When you read these prophecies, the prophets didn't always understand what these prophecies that they were prophesying, but it was already uh, set up in the spirit, that Israel is going to be scattered. Israel is going to be scattered. You're going to have a great number of Israelites as, that, that's going to lose their religion, so to speak, meaning not know who they, what nationality they are. And um, that ultimately happened to all of us. That ho ultimately happened to all of us where we all, all the tribes, so-called so lost 
who we were. So we had to get it back through, through, by, by a miracle, by, by, the, by the fact that the Most High put the Spirit on men to teach other men. And uh, they went out on the highways and the byways and ultimately used YouTube and the web to wake up these people. Yeah, and that's what's happening right now, and right? Like, hey, and this thing is like wildfire, man. This thing is like wildfire. Yeah, and it's happening right now. It's what you're seeing right now before you, when you see the different uh, videos and the camps going out there about, about the truth, uh, uh, the men of uh, beginning with the apostles, the great millstone, that's the fulfillment of, of these prophecies and these scriptures, you know, and the, and the gospel being spread out, you know, and the enzyme being Yahweh Shai being uplifted. And that's making these Edomites scared because that's why they send that group out talking about how to deal with the Israelites because they're in the behind the scenes. They get nervous because they're seeing that the, the, the prophecies are being fulfilled in front of their eyes. See, Jake don't see it. The ones whose eyes are closed, they don't see it. But the, the, the elite, they see it, man. So they're trying to bring guys out to do videos and stuff to show how to deal with the Israelites. And that's why they said GMS is the worst group of, all, of them all. And we take that as a compliment, you know? That's why you went to a GOCC, because they're open to Gentiles, meaning other nations, which simply prove that they don't know the scriptures, man. All right. That's why the, the one of the last scriptures that the last videos that they did, the, the, the dude, the dude said it. He said, we ain't going to um, it's not going to be like roots. It's not going to be like roots in our kingdom. Well, I immediately made a, a counter video to that, man. And I, pull, I brought I, got, I, I pulled out what, what, 10, 11 uh, scriptures showing you what we're going to do to them Edomites. Even earlier, Apostle Tar said about, uh, what was that, Balaam? What yeah, he said? Yeah, he said, yeah, he said those, the people are going to get crushed. Well, that was one of the that I out. Yeah. You know? So even he, being a heathen, saw what Israel going to do to those other, those, those foreign nations, man. You know? That's right. All right, so back in Isaiah 11 and 11. And it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall set his hand again the second time to recover the remnant of his people, which shall be left from Assyria and from Egypt and from Pathros and from Cush and from Elam and from Shinar and from Hamath and from the islands of the sea. And he shall set up an ensign for the nations and shall assemble the outcasts of Israel and gather together the dispersed of Judah from the four corners of the earth. The envy also of Ephraim shall depart and the adversaries of Judah shall be cut off. Ephraim shall not envy Judah, and Judah shall not vex Ephraim. It says, but they shall fly upon the shoulders of the Philistines. <laughs> Sound like some roots to shit to yeah, me. Yeah, exactly. and, but they shall fly upon the shoulders of the Philistines towards the west. They shall spoil them of the east together. Wait, wait a minute. What about the book of Psalms, the second chapter? Kern. Yeah, what about the book of Psalms, the second chapter? We, we gonna, uh, the beginning with Yahweh Shai, you're going to receive a scepter. You know, bash people in the head. You know, split their head wide open. What about that? You know? Yeah. That, sound, that's, that sounds like some, some, some root stuff. You know? <laughs> some root shit. It violent, violent. <laughs> you know, root shit. Worse than roots. You know? That's violence. Yeah, man. Uh, okay, the word for spoil is the word um, ba bazas or bazaza to spoil, plunder, prey upon, seize, to spoil, plunder, despoil, to be spoiled, plundered, to be taken as spoil. Uh, let's see if there's anything else. The whole snap. The primary power appears to be that of to pull in pieces. Ain't nobody pull nobody to pieces in the roots. You, can't buy a snake. you know? The worst you thing that happened in the roots was they whipped them and they cut Kunta Kinte's foot off, man. The they gonna pull them to pieces, man. I, I gotta back you up, bro. Uh, the book of Revelation 2 and beginning at 26. And he that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end, to him will I give power over the nations. 
and he shall rule them with a rod of iron as the vessels of a potter shall they be broken to shivers like you said pieces pieces even as i received of my father they can put the chains on your body never let them put the chains yo cz was right it's not gonna be like roots it's gonna be a hundred a hundred times a hundred times worse than roots that's what that's what happens when you have that's your why them dudes the Edomites ran over to these guys man because they were going to get you know they're going they were they were going to get their the pat their the backs pat, oh, you know see you be my equal. friendly neighborhood israelite friendly no neighborhood israelite no uh this is a cold slice of cut. uh micah five and seven and the remnant of jacob shall I'll be in the midst again. of many people as a do from the lord as the showers upon the grass that tarrieth not for man, nor waiteth for the sons of men. And the remnant of Jacob shall be among the Gentiles in the midst of many people, as a lion among the beasts of the forest, as a young lion among the flocks of sheep, who if he go through, both treadeth down and teareth in pieces. Now, how can you get any other uh, interpretation? Well, that really means, see, that's spiritual, and that means this and that. You can't get any other interpretation, man. It says, Who if he go through, both tread it down and tear it in pieces, and none can deliver. <laughs> I got a precept hey, for you. That means you can't call 911. Because 911 going to be looking to save their own ass, man. That's right. You can't call Jesus. Uh, this is the uh, book. Can I, one more oh, verse, okay. It says, thine hands shall be lifted up upon thine adversaries, and all thine enemies shall be cut off. And see, just like the weatherman, you watch the weatherman, right? You know, whatever your favorite weatherman is, right? Okay. Let's say it's going to rain three days straight. Yeah. Can you get mad at the weatherman? No. You're a damn fool if you get mad at the weather weatherman. All he's doing is giving you the forecast of what the weather's going to be. He said for the next three days it's going to be rain. But on that fourth day, Thursday or whatever, the sun's going to come, come, come out. But we got to deal with that rain first. You can't get mad at the weather, man. All he's doing is forecasting the, the weather, all right? The same thing with us. We're forecasting what's going to happen. That's why we're known as prophets. We're forecasting as to what's going to happen. So why get mad at us? All we're doing is we're giving you the message, man. Now, if we change it and we say, yeah, Edomites can make it and, you know, this, that, and the other, you st you're still going to get jacked up. But you're going to be thinking everything's going to be all right until your ass get until that uh, the thing takes place. And then you're going to be looking at me like you lied to me. Well, that, first of all, you're supposed, to be, you're supposed to say, look, GMS, we love them guys. All of you, Edomites. More bites, all of you supposed to say we love them guys because they told us the truth. Right. Well, it tells you in Je uh, uh, Jeremiah 1 that, that the most I set up Jeremiah to be a prophet unto the nations, man. I got a precept, um, the book of Jeremiah 51 and 19. The portion of Jacob is not like them, <laughs> for he is the form of all things, and Israel is the rod of his inheritance. The Lord of hosts is his name. Thou art my battle axe and weapons of war, for with thee will I break in pieces the nations. Mm. That sounds worse than roots. Breaking pieces. Breaking pieces. And with thee will I destroy kingdoms. Mm. And with thee will I break in pieces the horse and his rider. And with thee will I break in pieces the chariot and his rider. With thee also will I break in pieces man and woman. And with thee will I break in pie pieces old and young. Cornelius is going to be on that side. He's going to be on the side of Jacob. Con. He's going to be doing the breaking in pieces. In pieces. <laughs> breaking bad. <laughs> breaking bad, right? And with, with thee will I break in pieces old and young. That sounds worse than roots. And with thee will I break in pieces the young man and the maid. I will also break in pieces with thee the shepherd and his flock. And with thee will I break in pieces the husbandman and his yoke of oxen. And with thee will I break in pieces captains and rulers. So, you know. I got a uh, scripture right here. And uh, this is Numbers 23, verse 7, on down to 11, right? It says, and he took up his parable and said, uh, Balak, the king of Moab, 
have brought me from uh, Aram out of the mountains of the east, saying, Come, curse me, Jacob, and come, defy Israel. How, um, how shall I curse whom the Most High have not cursed? So he, this, this, this king of Belak gave him a lot of riches to do this. And he's saying, and he was going to do it too. And the Most High had to slap him, buffer him up, you know. And um, he, he said, then he came to his senses and he said, well, look. He said, you can't curse these people. These are the Most High's people. It says, or how shall I defy whom the Most High have not defied? Uh, a night verse. For from the top of the rocks I see him, and from the hills I behold him. Lo, the people, meaning Israelites, shall dwell alone and shall not be reckon, recognized among the nations. That's why, th that's why you got that group. You got a lot of groups coming to us. These guys are going around saying that they're the lost children of Israel when we know that the children of Israel is scattered there in the land of Israel and they're, uh, they're in uh, the, the, the people of, uh, uh, I'm thinking of a group, the Filipinos, they're the Israelites, and then you got uh, Israelites that live in the Himalaya Mountains. You know, that's the, this, the one guy, the naked prophet, oh, yeah. he did a thing, and I'm looking at he said, we're going to break down the 12 tribes of Israel, right? Man, he ain't come nowhere near. The who the 12, he was all up in the Himalayan mountains. He was in Cambodia. Yeah, that's the tribe of Benjamin. <laughs> I, I mean, I said, and this is some, says this some old bullshit, man. Times, I remember when that came out, and I, I wanted to go down there. That's an A&E, but Israel. you can't find it. I wanted to go down there and confront we'll that guy, spiritually, of course, Israel. about this thing, you know? The naked prophet. The the hell? The hey, pull him up, and man. Let me see, let me see, let me see what he's been doing with his life. Yeah, the naked prophet. And people yeah, the, are the, the Cambodians, the Benjaminites, and the uh, and the, uh, uh, just the, uh, the people of New Nepal. That's Gad. Get the hell out of here, man. Get the hell out of here. <laughs> it says, it says uh, uh, to nine verse, for from the top of the rocks I see him, and from the hills I beho behold him. Lo, the people Israel shall, shall dwell alone and shall be not and shall not be reckon among the nations. So they're not recognizing this, man. As a matter of fact, they set up certain guys that are, that, that are scholars and Bible historians telling you who the tribes of Israel are, and um, it's, that's, that's BS. It says, uh, 10th verse, how, um, how uh, who can count the dust of Jacob and the number of the fourth part of Israel. And one of the reasons why Mo, the king of Moab wanted them uh, a curse, because when they came out of Egypt, they were so big that everybody in that region, that area, knew about them. There, there had to be millions of people. Because when you go to Deuteronomy, the second chapter, it said that when they walked on the top of that cliff where Esau was, it said that Esau was afraid of them. Somebody get that and hold that on deck. It says, um, who can count the dust? Y'all got it? Who can count the dust of Jacob and the number of the fourth part of Israel? Meaning if you 25% of Israel, you can't even count them. They're so big that they're among every nation. You got Israel, like we said earlier in the show. You got Israelites. You know how many Is millions of Israelites is living down there in Cam Cambodia? Well, maybe the dude was right. <laughs> the Cambodians, are the, you might be right, you know. Hey, down there in Cambodia, uh, uh, Mongolia, uh, Russia, uh, China, Japan. And you got this one guy, he was a star baseball player. And you can clearly see he looked like everybody's black uncle from down south, but he had Moabite eyes or Japanese eyes. And this guy was a great baseball star, but you can clearly see the man was dark, but he looked like a black Japanese. Well, he was an Israelite, okay? It says, uh, uh, who can count the dust of Jacob and the number of the fourth part of Israel? Let, let me, this is what he said. This is what Balaam said, because he saw the future of what Israel is going to do and what Israel is going to be. It said, let me die the death of the righteous. So Israel are the righteous. 
Hence, the sons, the, the uh, sons of the righteous or sons of God. It says, and let my last end be like his. It says at the end of this deal, I hope that I can wake up and be an Israelite, which he's not going to be. All right? It says, 11 verse, and Balak said unto Balaam, what hast thou done unto me? I took thee to curse mine enemies, and behold, thou hast blessed them all together. All right? Now I'm going to go from here to... Yeah, go ahead and read. Deuteronomy 2 and 1. Then we turned and took our journey into the wilderness by the way of the Red Sea, as the Lord spake unto me, and we compassed Mount Seir many days. And the Lord spake unto me, saying, You have compassed this mountain long enough, turn you northward. And command thou the people, saying, You are to pass through the coast of your brethren, the children of Esau, which dwell in Seir, and they shall be afraid of you. Take ye good heed, take good heed unto yourselves, therefore meddle not with them, for I will not give you of their land, no, not so much as a foot breadth, because I have given Mount Seir unto Esau for a possession. Then read and break it down. Come. <laughs> All right, it says, um, Then we turned and took our journey into the wilderness by the way of the Red Sea, as the Lord spake unto me, and we compassed Mount Seir many days. And the Lord spake unto me, saying, You have compassed this mountain long enough, turn you northward, and command thou the people, saying, You are to pass through the coast of your brethren, the children of Esau, which dwell in Seir, and they shall be afraid of you. Take ye good heed unto yourself, therefore. That's right. This is uh, Numbers 24. I can read up uh, 13. I can read up a couple. You know what? No, no, no. Let me go up a couple verses. Okay, it says uh, Numbers 24, verse 10. It said, And Balak's anger was kindled against Balaam. And Balaam was the one that was uh, paid by Balak, king of Moab, to uh, curse Israel. And he smote his hands together, and Balak said unto Balaam, I called thee to curse mine enemies, and behold, thou hast altogether blessed them these three times. 11 verse, therefore, now flee thou to thy place. I thought to, to promote thee unto great honor, but lo, Yahweh have kept thee back from honor. And now the word Yah Yahweh there, the, the word Lord there was Yahweh. All right? Um, 12 verse. And Balaam said unto Balak, Speak I not also to thy messengers which thou sentest unto me, saying, If Balak would give me his house full of silver and gold, I cannot go beyond the commandment of Yahweh. So let me go. So he knew that the name of the Most High was Yahweh. Because let me let me let me click on that. Yep, the word is Yahweh. So he had there said it. He knew his name. Um. Okay, it says, uh, it says, I could not go beyond the commandment of Yahweh to do either good or bad of my own mind. But what Yahweh saith, that will I speak. 14, and now behold, I go unto my people, come hither, and I will adv advertise thee, what this people shall do to thy people in the latter days. In the latter days, it's talking about, it hasn't happened yet. It's getting ready to happen. 15, and he took up this par his parable and said, Balaam, the son, the son of Beor, Be have said, and the man whose eyes were, are open, have said, what does it mean by his, the man whose eyes were open, have said? Who opened his eyes? The Mosai. What eyes is it talking about? His spiritual eyes. 
the Most High gave him a, a, a prophecy of what's going to happen a, a, a couple thousand years, what, almost 3,000 years in the future. Actually, about more than 3,000 years in the future. It says, uh, he hath said, which heard the words of the Most High, and knew the knowledge of, what? Wait a minute. And knew the knowledge of the Most High, which saw the vision, the Most High gave him a vision. Remember, he was a heathen. He was of another nation. How do we know that? When you go back to the 23rd chapter, he said, let me die the death of, of the righteous. Let me be like them in the, in, in the latter days. At the end, it said, he hath said, which heard the words of the Most High or the, uh, the gods and knew the knowledge of the Most High, which saw the vision of the Almighty, Alashadja, falling into a trance but having his eyes open. 17. I shall see him, but not now. I shall behold him, but, but not nigh, meaning near. Not yet. It's going to be over 3,000 years in the future when this thing is going to come to pass. There shall come a star out of Jacob. That's your shy, And it tells you that in uh, Revelation, the 22nd chapter. Somebody want to get that and hold it on deck as well? Revelation, the 22nd chapter. I believe it's in. And a scepter shall rise out of Israel. Shep, scepter meaning rulership. When you have a scepter in your hand, the other people around about you got to bow down to you and worship you. You got that? Got it. My um, man, Alize. And shall smite the corners of Moab. What is the word? Let me look up the word smite. You want me to read the scripture for you? No, hold, hold, hold off on that. I want to look up the word smite. Let me look up the word smite. Okay, smite is from the Hebrew word makataza. That's a good name, makataza. Next brother need a name. Give him the word and the name makataza. And it means to smite through, shatter, wound severely. To shatter, shattering, goes on to say, primitive, primitive root, to dash asunder, to crush, like Idak, smash, or violently plunge, figuratively, to subdue or destroy, smite, strike through, wound. So this is what Balaam said, man. And Balaam was nothing but a, another weatherman, just like us. Okay, where am I at? Um, okay, I'm going to read that again. 17. I shall see him, but not now. But then, but then again, the Mosai turns around when he sees this guy, the righteousness of Cornelius, the Edomite. No, this, I was wrong about these Edomites. Which, 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 which says that if that's the case, that means the Most High ain't perfect. Yeah. That, that means the Most High's a liar. Yeah. It says, um, 17 verse again, Numbers 24, 17, right? It says, I shall see him, but not now. I shall behold him, but, but not nigh, but not near. There shall come a star out of Jacob, which is Yehoshai, and a scepter shall rise out of Israel and shall smite the corners of Moab, and destroy all the children of Seth, all right? Seth goes back to the other, the third son of, of, uh, of Adam. So those nations that came at it, at it because the nations came from, a, from uh, Adam, then from Seth. That's where the, the line went from Adam to Seth, all right? The sons of, of, of Cain came from Cain, his son Cain. It says, and Edom shall be a, pose oh, and Edom shall be a possession, Seir also shall be a possession, and Seir is the place where Edom lived. So we're going to possess Edom. Seir also shall be a possession for his enemies, and Israel shall do uh, valiantly. 19, out of Jacob shall come he that, ha that shall have dominion, rulership, so you got to worship him, and shall destroy him that remaineth of the city. Ultimately, the city is talking about Babylon the Great. 
And when he looked upon Amalek, he took up, and this is talking about the so-called Jew because he had Amaleks among Canaan, right? And this is how you know it's talking about uh, this other group of Amalek, Amalek. It says, he took up his parable and said, Amalek was the first of the nations, but his latter end shall be that he, that he perish forever. What's the only nation that's going to perish forever? Esau. And y'all know who Esau is. It says, and he looked on the Kenites and took up his parable and said, strong is thy dwelling place and thou put of thy nest in a rock. Because before Esau was, was in Mount Seir, you had the, uh, the Horites up there, which were, which were Canaanites. So the first cave dwellers were Canaanites. Uh, 22, nevertheless, the Kenites uh, shall be wasted until a shore shall, shall carry thee away captive. And he took up his parable and said, Alas, who shall live when the Most High doest, doest this? And it says, uh, And ships shall come from the coast of Chittim, and shall afflict Ashur, and shall afflict Eber, and he also shall perish forever. And Balaam rose up and went and returned to his place, and Balak also went his way. He's like, when we told him that, you know, he went into detail. He's, he, he got up and walked away. And then this guy got up and walked away. He said, I ain't got nothing to say to this guy no more. You know? Uh, this is Isaiah 33 and 1. Woe to thee that spoilest, and thou was not spoiled. And dealest treacherously, and they dealt not treacherously with thee. When thou shalt cease to spoil, thou shalt be spoiled. And when thou shalt make an end to deal treacherously, they shall deal treacherously with thee. That, that sounds like some root, root stuff to me. Uh, this is the book of Jeremiah, chapter 30, and uh, verse uh, 16. Therefore, all they that devour thee shall be devoured, and all thine adversaries, every one of them, shall go into captivity, and they that spoil thee shall be a spoil, and all that prey upon thee will I give for a prey. You ask them the Apostle Bar? Yeah. Um, the book of uh, uh, Ezekiel, the 25th chapter and the 12th verse. Thus saith the Lord, because that Edom have dealt against the house of Judah by taking vengeance and have greatly offended and revenged himself upon them. Therefore, thus saith the Lord, power, I will also... I will also stretch out mine hand upon Edom and will cut off man and beast from it. Hey, no group, no biblical group that, you know, that comes together and puts up videos talking about how to, how to deal with the Israelites. You can't get around these scriptures. That's right. You cannot get around these scriptures. Remember, we are just spiritual weathermen. We're just giving you the weather. That's it. So why are you getting mad? You, all you got to do is just to accept it. We had to accept it because right. Israel was, was, was jacking up the prophets and killing them, man. That's right. And, 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 and nearly putting, like Jeremiah, they didn't put him to death, but they were, they were, they were attempting to put him to death. He was, he was in a pit, man. And he was prophesying what, what was going to happen to Israel. That's right. And um, they got mad, man. So now, now I can see you Edomites getting mad, but guess what? Just like we had to... Oh, Jeremiah 49, you know what I want? Yeah, yeah, okay. Kind of, kind of. Hey, just like we had to uh, drink of his cup, you got to drink of his cup. It's your turn, my man. You That's got right. to deal with it. Don't get mad at us. We're just spiritual divine weathermen. That's all we are. Yeah. GMS divine weathermen. Yeah, the, forecast is, the forecast is a lot of pain. <laughs> I, I predict pain. <laughs> we predict pain. What's your prediction for the fight with Rodney Pain. <laughs> Forecast is a lot of pain. <laughs> pain will fall like rain. <laughs> That's right. Jer Jeremiah 49 and 12. For thus saith the Lord power, Yahweh Bashem Yahushai, behold, they whose judgment was not to drink of the cup have assuredly drunken. And that's Israel. All you got to do is go back into history and see what happened to Israel. They said, surely... They whose judgment was not to drink of the cup have assuredly drunken. They, so we drink, you know. And art thou he that shall altogether go unpunished? 
So just because you you know you you say you ain't gonna uh, pay, and just because you have these clowns that that call themselves Israelites that say you're not gonna pay, does that mean you're not gonna pay? Yeah, just Look, we drank uh, we drank it to like it possible. No, we drank of the cup. You know, we the most we the apple of the most high's eye. We drank of that cup. Damn it, you gonna drink of it? Yeah, just cause some friendly neighborhood Israelite, you know, yep. butted butted them up. They think that they are gonna bypass the judgment. It says, for thus saith the Lord, behold, they whose judgment was not the drink of the cup have assuredly drunken, and art thou he that shall altogether go unpunished? Thou shalt not punish, but thou shalt surely drink of it. And shall we make an emphasis that, the mo that they're not the Mosai's people, and the Mosai actually hates them? Because yep. he said, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. So how much more are they going to get that judgment? Now, look at the judgment he put on the people that he loved. That's Israel. How much more judgment he gonna put on the people that he hates? Mm. All right. So, uh, the book of Ezekiel twenty-five and twelve. Thus saith the Lord, Power, because that Edom have dealt against the house of Judah by taking vengeance and have greatly offended and revenged himself upon them. And a good example is Roots. All right. Roots is a good example. You know, uh, Emmett Till, another example. Uh, slavery. All right. Last hired, first fired, you know, uh, 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 what else? Ghettos, you know, all by the hand of the so-called white man. Um, Therefore, thus saith the Lord power, I will also stretch out mine hand upon Edom and will cut off man and beast from it. And I will make it desolate from Teman, and day of the dawn shall fall by the sword. And parabolically, that's talking about America which is the capital city of Edom. Just like back in the day, Bozra was the capital city of the land of Edom. Well, America is the modern-day Bozra, the modern-day capital city of the land of Edom. Edom is a so-called white man. And I will lay my vengeance upon Edom by the hand of my people Israel, and they shall do in Edom according to mine anger and according to my fury. So we're going to literally physically lay hands on, on, on the Edomites. Jesus, and we're not going to tickle them <laughs> like my man. Stop, I said stop, man. not tickle. You're not reading your books now. <laughs> go on, go on, we're on. not going to tickle. <laughs> and he was a Jake, that's now right. Stab me. Huh? He's a Jake that looked like a so-called white man. Me. Hey, we're not going to tickle them. We're not going to play on, footsies stab, with them. Tickle. We're going to be very nasty to them. All right? And I will lay vent, and it's going to be the vengeance of not only Israel, but the vengeance of the Most High, the spirit of his vengeance will be in us, to, which will propel us to do what we have to do. I will lay my vengeance upon Edom by the hand of my people Israel. That's plain. And they shall do in Edom according to mine anger. Just like I said, the Lord's spirit is going to be in us, do what we have to do. And according to my fury, and they shall know my vengeance, saith the Lord. Power. That's it. All right. All right. So, uh, this is the book of Revelation 13 and 9. It says, um, If any man have an ear, let him hear. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here's the patience and the faith of the saints. So, either two things either them guys got paid off, or, or the Lord just blinded them to these scriptures. You know, because this it's plain that these nations are going, they're going, they're going to get it, man. You know, you, you think that they did all that wickedness to us going back to when the Spaniards first came to this land. And, and then, then later on, they brought uh, uh, Judah, Benjamin and Levi over here and all the atrocities and the things that they did, the castrations, the rapes, the murders, you know, the uh, uh, selling, uh, the, the breaking the families apart, selling the children to one plantation, the wife to another. You don't think that, that you're going to pay for that? That's why people are flying, finding out who the, the Most High is dealing with. What camp is the, Most High, is the Most High dealing with? The Most High, Yahweh Baya Shem Yahweh Shai, is dealing with, from the apostles on down, of GMS. R.E.R. did a video. I met, ran into R.E.R. I was happy to meet him. Still referred to him as high priest Ariya. The Most High is not dealing with him right now. Most High damn sure ain't dealing with uh, Tazadakia. 
Most High not dealing with IUIC. The Most High is not dealing with the GOCC. The Most High is not dealing with the ISUPK, the, Mo the HODC. The Most High is not dealing with none of them, man. That group of Edomites that get together, how to deal with it. The Most High ain't dealing with them. Most High is only dealing with us. Anyway, Revelation 22, verse 16. And that's why I did the video on the, bre the, 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 uh, the Brexit. None of them other guys did a video on it. They might do it now since they saw it. Oh, no, I can show you. You didn't know. You didn't know how to, you know how to piece that thing together in the spirit. It says, Revelation 22, verse 16, I, Yahweh Shai, has sent mine angel to testify unto you these things in the churches, seven churches of Asia Minor. I am the root and offspring of David, meaning he came from the line of David with no, uh, uh, what does he call it, virgin birth, direct descendant. So Joseph, his father, was his biological father. This scripture, right, you don't got to go to no more scriptures. Just go to this one scripture, all right? And the bright and morning star. That's why Balaam said a star shall come out of Jacob. That's, that's, the, that's the link up. That's right. This is our Colossians 3 and 25. But he that doeth wrong shall receive for the wrong which he hath done, and there is no respect of persons. So you devils, you're going to pay, you're going to pay, you're going to pay. And it's not just you. It's going to be all the other nations too. You're not, you're not going to be alone. So, you know, we, we had to deal with it by ourselves. All them nations came up against us. You, gonna, you ain't going to be alone. You're going to get your ass whipped and everybody else going to get their ass whipped. And don't take it personal, man. It's just business. It's spiritual. It's, don't, don't take it. I was thinking about Don't take it. When, when we start whipping your ass, don't take it personal. Hey, it's business. Hey, beginning with your, I don't know if somebody read uh, uh, Psalm 149. No. Beginning with, <laughs> beginning with your, uh, your elites, man, that old toofy bastard, uh, Jacob Rothschild, and uh, Elon Rothschild, who has that. Uh, well, it came out the real reason why they're down there in Syria, to get that oil. Con. They mentioned Jacob Rothschild, uh, Soros, and who else? I think one of the Rockefellers. So, the, so it came out, the reason why they went down there and they're trying to get rid of the um, Assad out of being the, 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 the number one man. Con. It's going to come out, man, and the whole world sees it, you know? How are the things of Esau searched out? Yep. Obadiah 1 and 6. Uh, quick precept, um, the book of Isaiah, this is directed to the elites, the Rothschild family, the, the super rich banking families. They're going to be the first to taste that, that scepter right across the head, man. Um, Isaiah 24 and 20, the earth shall reel to and fro like a drunkard and shall be removed like a cottage. And the transgression thereof shall be heavy upon it and shall fall and not rise again. That's mm. talking about the missiles. That's heavy. That transgression shall yeah. be heavy upon it. That's heavy. why there's so much wickedness going on. And I think it was one of the prophets said, Lord, was you displeased with the trees? And was you displeased with the mountains that you put such a heavy transgression on them? Now, the Lord wasn't displeased with them, yet he put a heavy transgression on them. So how much more are the ones he is displeased with? <laughs> Oh, man, you, you in trouble. You in trouble. Uh, Isaiah 24 and 21. And it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall punish the host of the high ones that are on high. And that's, you, that's you bankers, man. You Rothschilds, you Rockefellers, Gettys, DuPonts, all these top rich banking families, names you don't even hear about, Oppenheimers. But those families are still around. And the kings of the earth upon the earth, and they're all so-called white people, by the way. And they shall be gathered together as prisoners are gathered in the pit. And that sounds like roots. And shall be shut up in the prison. And after many days shall they be visited. Mm. <laughs> so they're going to be rounded up, thrown in a pit. And after many days, we... You know, we, the elect of the nation of Israel, are going to go check them out and see how they're doing. Yeah, they, like, they, they like to lock people up. Yeah, they like to lock people up. 
You know, that old toofy bastard Jacob Rothschild, he gets off when he sees Israel locked up. You know? Ale yeah. Well, he, he, he going to get locked up. All right? Along with his, 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 his smiling brother, Elon Rothschild. Uh, then the moon shall be confounded and the sun ashamed, meaning all your so-called wisdom and understanding, you, you bankers, you glorify and creating that Federal Reserve. You think you're so smart. You know, you had your flunkies got together in Jekyll Island and all that madness, you know, and you, you said, yeah, we'll really, we'll put this thing together and really rake the people good. So you created your Federal Reserve and by that you think you're God. Well, the scriptures say, then the moon shall be confounded, meaning your wisdom. Is when, when the Most High put them missiles on you and them chariots, you're going to see that all that wickedness that you did is, is not going to amount to nothing. <laughs> then the moon shall be confounded and the sun ashamed when the Lord of hosts shall reign in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem and before his ancients gloriously. His ancients starting with King, uh, you know, Abba Bivens, uh, well, King Masha, Abba Bivens, Elder Yaquab, uh, Elder uh, High Priest Arya, and men such as that, and then going down, El Elder Apostle <coughs> Taha, and, and other men, you know, of, of the elect. Those are the ancients, you know? Uh, this is uh, Isaiah chapter 47. <laughs> Salakia. Isaiah chapter 47, verse 10. For thou hast trusted in thy wickedness, thou hast said, none seeth me. Thy wisdom and thy knowledge, it hath perverted thee. And thou hast said in thine heart, I am and none else beside me. You know, and that's why you got all these different people out here basically trying to uh, uh, distort the truth, you know, and, 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 try, and trying to uh, so-called be apologetics for you devils and for the other nations. And it ain't, it ain't going to work because the judgment is already written. It's already etched in stone what's, what, what your future is. And no matter what you do and no matter how many people you pay off and no matter how many lives you put out there, you're not going to be able to escape from your judgment. It says, Therefore shall evil come upon thee, thou shalt not know from whence it riseth. <laughs> because, you know, right now you've, it seems like you're in control. Because, you know, you have the, the uh, uh, earth's uh, uh, um, riches and the resources and, you, you know, and no matter what, you know, whoever rises up against you, you squash them, you know, and all that. But it says it's going to come a point where therefore shall evil come upon thee, thou shalt know, not know from whence it rises. Because according to you, you have the whole world in your hand, <laughs> you know. Yeah, all the evil up to now, all the evil they claim they created, yep. which is another reason why they think they're God. You know, because they create, we know about auto app kale, you know, they create the evil, they have the hot program, so they're able to create storms and all of that. So they, that's the Heavenly Father fattening them up for the kill. That's it. That's it. It says, and mischief shall fall upon thee. Here's the point. Thou shalt not be able to put it off. So I don't give a damn what you do. The, the Lord don't give a damn what you do. You, you're going to pay. Like uh, the Pharaoh of old, he had magicians. Excuse me. Yep. They could do tricks, but when those plagues came upon them, <laughs> they, could, they couldn't do nothing with those plagues that the Heavenly Father sent by the hand of Moses. <laughs> That's right. That's right. <laughs> it was the same thing with the so-called white man. That's so right. that proves that plagues is about to hit America, about to hit the so-called white man's world, because he's the modern-day Pharaoh, modern-day Egypt. It says, And desolation shall come upon thee suddenly, which thou shalt not know. Stand now with thine enchantments and with the multitude of thy sorceries wherein thou hast labored from thy youth. If so be, thou shalt be able to profit. If so be, thou mayest prevail. And you know who they're going to come to when all these plagues start coming? They're going to come to us for answers. Just like the Egyptians of old, they, they had to go to who? Moses to get the answers. It says, Thou art wearied in the multitude of thy counsels. Let not the, now the astrologers, the stargazers, the monthly prognosticators stand up and save thee from these things that shall come upon thee. <laughs> you ain't going to be able to put it off, man. It ain't going to be no, no uh, peace for you devils, you know, in, in the kingdom, man, and for none of you other nations. 
you know, just go back in the history, see what you did, and you're going to pay double. There's some great mysteries out there, man. There's a website I, 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 I subscribe to. It's, it's the top five things. They usually go into the top five secret, the top five mysteries and top five deadly animals and top five. Man, they got some things in this world, man, that's beyond comprehension. And, and some of it you could tell is fake, but some of it's like, whoa. It's like they got some serious mysteries out there, man. You know, serious creatures. That there be spirits that are created for vengeance. Yeah, yeah, and Esau is privy to some of them. He knows about some of them, man, but he ain't telling the public because he don't want them to be alarmed, you know? It says, Behold, they shall be as stubble, the fire shall burn them. They shall not deliver themselves from the power of the flame. <laughs> they shall... <laughs> What's the stuff? Oh, you shall perish in flames. Uh, there shall not be a cold to warm it, nor fire to sit before it. Thus shall they be unto thee with whom thou hast labored, even thy merchants from thy youth. They shall wander every one to his quarter. None shall save thee. Why? Because America, once America is destroyed, these nations, they can't make no more money, man. They're going to be going back to their, to their homeland. Even in that video, the top five, the guy, with, he has an English accent. The way he be narrating it, narrating it. Mm. Hey, hey, it's got, like scary. <laughs> Gets all into it. Have the music, yeah, in the yeah, back, yeah right? that that strange music yeah, yeah. in the background. Come, yep. come, come. And hey, well, anyway, we're gonna close. I mean, we got into a little bit on the Cornelius thing. We're gonna get into. Believe me, this is an ongoing thing. We're gonna, we're gonna, you're gonna find out that Cornelius is an Israelite, and we're gonna go into more scriptures. There's many scriptures to come. So with that, I'm gonna say uh, shalom. <laughs>